All right, so I just want to respond to the ongoing debate about soy, milk, and all that kind of stuff, estrogen, hormones, all that kind of stuff. So we have here a comment on the bodybuilding forums, bodybuilding.com, and it says estrogen and it increasing from consumptions of certain foods is so stupid. Estrogen in soy is the biggest crock of shit. Soy has isoflavins that can uh, bin, bind, he said bin, bind to estrogen receptors and can show small increases in estrogen, but not all the times. You'd have to be consuming like over 50 to 60 grams of it to even see a slight increase. So he agrees with the estrogen in the soy not having a big effect. And I've gone through this plenty of times and it doesn't have any effect. I'll show you a couple of studies here. I'll go through them. So basically what happened here is 150 uh, women were tested and there was a soy milk group and a non-soy milk group. And the people with the soy decreased their estradiol levels by 27%. Second study here, the investigation that uh, shows that 12-week supplementation with soy protein does not decrease serum testosterone or inhibit lean body mass changes in subjects engaged in resistance exercise programs. And this was compared to whey. Last but not least was a meta-analysis and it showed that no, there was no significant effects of soy protein or isoflavin intake on testosterone, uh, sex hormone binding glob globulin, and free testosterone. Estrogen and dairy doesn't even make sense. Really doesn't it? Because it's a lactating cow when they have a lot of estrogen. Uh, only thing that dairy might have small effects on estrogen is soy milk and like I said if you think your nipples are gonna fall off from a glass or two or four of soy you are very mistaken. <laughs> this guy's Little signature says, no bro science tolerated. <laughs> so what we have here is reference ranges for serum estradiol uh, for an adult male. And you've got adult female down here as well. And it says the lower limit is 14 and the upper limit is 55. I've checked around. They're about the right levels. And it's PG per milliliter. I think it's picograms per milliliter. It's a very small amounts, but it has a big effect in the body. And we have here, free natural estrogens in raw and commercial whole milk were quantified by radio immuno assay. The ranges of concentration of estrone, estradiol, 17 beta, and estrol were 34 to 55, 4 to 14. Now that's the key number there, because this is the estradiol levels. 4 to 14. Also, I'd just like to point out that organic, see here, organic and conventional dairy products did not have substantially different concentrations of estrone and estradiol. So they're basically the same, organic and conventional. No matter what someone tells you, there are natural occurring hormones and they're in about the same amounts. And I'll link these studies in the description. And you know, for all those people saying, and they're not real numbers. Well, yeah, they are because they're actually done by the 2000, 2010 American Dairy Science Association. And another study here showing that there's about 330 picograms in 237 mils of uh, raw milk. So 237 mils, that's like a cup of milk. And we've got 330 picograms, which is... Uh, over the serum levels, so over the amount in your blood. So it's crazy to be drinking this stuff. Uh, it's obviously going to affect your estrogen levels in a negative way. And it's not surprising that people in their teenage years, you know, while they're hitting puberty, that they're getting either um, gynecomastia under their uh, nipples, like guys, I got it as well. I had a lot of milk and I got it. And here's Dr. Gregor to talk to you about the IGF-1 in milk and the naturally occurring uh, hormones. No added hormones. Milk developed over the course of mammalian evolution only to be consumed during infancy. The consumption of cow's milk in humans 
interferes with the sensitive endocrine regulatory network from the fetal period into old age. While dairy is being reevaluated as human food, in the very least, given the tumor promoting effect of IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1, from dairy, patients with tumorous disease should restrict consumption of milk and milk protein. Unfortunately, we don't know if we have a tumor until it gets big enough to be picked up. The same applies to patients with coronary heart disease, number one killer in the United States, and those with a family history of neurodegenerative disease. Milk's already been identified as an aggravating factor in the acne epidemic, but it is even more important that excessive milk consumption can promote diseases commonly associated with a Western lifestyle. The number two most hormone-packed milk is skim milk. Why are we concerned? Breast cancer, for one thing, all part of the soup of cancer-causing suspects scientists continue to find in milk. Skim milk, second only to buttermilk, in terms of the levels of about a dozen steroid hormones recently found in retail milk. Part of the reason is what we've done to dairy cows. Through dietary and genetic manipulation, we're now able to force cows to lactate even in the late stages of pregnancy. And since we have to keep them constantly impregnated to produce milk, that's good for the industry, but right at the end of the third trimester, the hormone levels really skyrocket, and that's what we end up drinking. Milk was designed by nature to make things grow like crazy. That's why it's good for babies, but bad for tumors. Good for baby cows, but bad for adult people who may have tiny microscopic breast or prostate tumors, which we don't want growing so fast. In a study of 140,000 men this year, 35 grams of dairy protein increased the risk of developing high-grade prostate cancer by 76%, so that's like 2% increased risk for every gram of milk protein. So like a, a cup of cottage cheese a day could increase one's risk by about 50%.